the community is under siege, with beaches closed and tourism in tatters. Human remains were discovered washed up on shore. Australia's largest state has become the deadliest shark attack zone on the planet. That's the way Nat Geo Wild sees it after five fatal shark attacks in Western Australia in the past year. Professor Sean Collins and his team are working on new ways to prevent attacks and I spoke to him a little earlier. Good to speak with you Professor. There does seem to have been a, a spike in shark attacks in Australia in recent years. Uh, why do you think that is? Uh, well, it's a very good question. We're not really sure exactly the reasons why um, the attacks have occurred. There seems to be a bit of a spate, certainly in West Australia, where we've had actually tragically five deaths in, in about a year. A number of reasons could be the, uh, the environment has changed with global uh, climate change issues and or um, there might just be in fact more people entering the water and enjoying our coastline. But uh, we certainly uh, would like to explore ways of deterring sharks um, and uh, provide some confidence for people to go back into the water. It would be fantastic to have a, a really effective deterrent and I can see some uh, sort of camouflage wetsuits there. Uh, that's one product that you're working on. Uh, that's right. So recently um, Together with uh, Professor Nathan Hart of the UWA Oceans Institute, we've been working uh, together with um, Shark Attack Mitigation uh, Systems, uh, a company that allowed us to work on the science behind making a, a wetsuit design, which is based on interfering with the visual system of sharks. We made a discovery a couple of years ago that sharks were in fact colorblind and that high contrast was in fact what uh, they used to detect their environment and uh, potential prey items. So from that work we've developed two basic designs, one based on um, in fact a, a pattern, repeating pattern which of high contrast which in fact would appear quite conspicuous to a shark but um, will really mimic uh, a noxious food item which would be unpalatable to, uh, to the shark. And the other one was really based on the, uh, the fact that because the sharks are colorblind, if we are able to model the light environment in which uh, the shark is uh, occurring, we can in fact camouflage the, the silhouette and make the wearer less visible to the shark. Some of your deterrents are a little bit more complicated. Tell us about this curtain of bubbles. The WA State Government recently funded our group to um, look at testing existing deterrents and develop some novel ones. And the novel ones are based on, on light, sound and, and bubbles, as you've pointed out. The idea of the bubbles is to produce a veil, a non-physical barrier, which is set up not so much around an individual, but in fact a whole beach, so we can hopefully protect large areas of, of protected beach line, where high pressure bubbles would be set up, which would generally interfere with two of the sensory systems of sharks. One, their auditory system, and the other, a sense that we don't have called the lateral line, which actually detects water movement uh, around the animal. If you were banking on one of these systems, which one would you use? <laughs> well, it's a good question. We're, we've still got a way to go. We're about six months into a, a two-year, in fact, two two-year grants uh, from the government. At this stage, we're actually brought out the wetsuit design, so we think this is a, a very good first step. But in the, in the future, we'd actually like to have sensors which are actually detecting the presence of a shark, alerting the public to those, which would then deploy a whole range of different uh, sensory deterrents, which can provide a lot more confidence for us to, uh, to go back in the water. So this is really uh, winding out the first of, of many types of deterrents, which uh, require a lot of testing for uh, us to be you know, completely confident that they're going to work and deter these animals on a regular basis. Let's hope the answer is not far away to give us all a lot of confidence. Thank you very much, Professor. Great to speak to you. Pleasure. Thanks for having me.